After cleaning and drying all reusable components, lay all parts out in a logical fashion and match each service kit part with its matching component. Take care to not confuse the soft, low pressure port plug O-ring with its identically sized but much stiffer DIN housing O-ring. Then remove all old parts. Thus, at the completion of reassembly, no parts should remain on the work surface. Carefully drop the lifter into the center hole in the main housing. Using fresh gloves and no lubricant, bow the diaphragm into a gentle convex curve and tuck it into the recess below the threads. Work it into position by flexing the edge downward and do not drag it against the threads. Use a blunt brass spade and run the tip around the periphery of the diaphragm to ensure that it lies completely below the threads. Similarly bowing the diaphragm washer, tuck it into place below the threads. As you work it into position, take care to avoid creasing or folding the washer. Again, use the brass spade to ensure the washer lies below the threads. The diaphragm cap has larger threads and a chrome finish on the diaphragm sides, smaller threads, and a black finish on the environmental cap side. Screw the adjust screw into the black finish side one half turn. This will minimize pressure on the mainspring when the diaphragm cap is installed. Turn the diaphragm cap over so that the chrome finish is up. Drop a washer into the adjust screw, followed by the mainspring. Using two tiny dots as a temporary adhesive, place lubricant on the top of the mainspring and tack the second washer to the spring surface. Without dislodging the second washer, add the spring seat, centering it on the mainspring. Screw the diaphragm cap up into the main housing from below. This will prevent dropping the loose parts in the cap. Continue screwing in by hand until you feel resistance. Mount the main housing in a vise with a vise handle in a high pressure port. Using a number six hook spanner with a 0.156 inch pin, tighten the diaphragm cap until there is firm metal to metal contact between the diaphragm cap and the main housing. Maintain pressure on the pin to avoid it skipping out and spalling the finish. After obtaining firm metal to metal contact, there should be no gap when held up to a light. Now turn the adjust screw clockwise until only three threads are showing. The added mainspring pressure will center the lifter in the main housing. Turn the main housing over and confirm that the shaft of the valve lifter is centered in the bore of the housing. Place a lightly lubricated O-ring on the land for the turret. Inspect for any lint caught in this O-ring. Remove and replace the O-ring as needed. Press the turret into place and confirm that it rotates smoothly. Add a thin line of lubricant to the land on the inside of the turret bolt. Generously lubricate the small, stiff, high-pressure O-ring. Pinching it into an oval, insert it into the top of the high-pressure bolt. Using a 1 8 inch dowel, rotate it flat and tamp it into place. Take the old high-pressure seat and using it 
as a tool, pass it partway into the O-ring, sliding it back and forth twice to make sure that it is centered. Add a lubricated O-ring to the land below the threads. Add another lubricated O-ring to the land at the base of the turret, followed by the thrust washer. Place the spring firmly over the top of the turret bolt. Insert the high pressure seat gently into the O-ring and depress it slightly to make sure that it engages properly. Place the turret assembly upright on a six millimeter hex key. Carefully invert the main housing without dislodging the turret. Carefully insert the turret bolt so that the high pressure seat stays centered in the bore of the main housing. Putting pressure on the spring holding the high pressure seat, engage the threads of the turret bolt and screw it hand tight. Using a straight shaft hex socket, torque the turret bolt to 170 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the bolt in with repeated applications of torque. Do not use a ball end hex as the surface area is insufficient for this torque setting and will damage the broach in the turret bolt. While the steps in the manual are correct, Inverting the DIN housing to screw it into the regulator comes with it the slight risk of dislodging the O-ring as it is screwed into the inlet. A safer approach is to place a lightly lubricated O-ring in the DIN housing, but to not then invert it. Instead, slip the saddle over the threaded end of the housing, concave side up. Now screw the DIN housing and the saddle up into the regulator from below until the O-ring is captured in the DIN housing. It is then safe to invert the regulator and mount in a vise. The hex flats of the DIN housing are deliberately shallow in order to allow free rotation of the DIN wheel. If an open-end crow foot attachment is used to torque this fitting, all of the force is applied to only two sides of the hex, and there is a risk of fracturing a point if excessive torque is applied or the tool slips. Instead, a six-point socket will apply force on all six sides of the housing. However, most modern sockets are supplied with a chamfer, which will decrease the area over which force is applied. The safest approach, therefore, is to grind the, the chamfer from the socket in order that the fitting will fit flush against the housing. Using your choice of tool, torque the DIN housing to 230 inch-pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the housing into place with repeated applications of torque. Slip the DIN wheel over the shaft of the housing and ensure that it rotates freely. Place an unlubricated O-ring over the filter. And with the filter positioned O-ring down, push the two into place with the wooden dowel. Add a lightly lubricated O-ring to the threaded end of the DIN retainer. Thread the retainer into the DIN housing. Using a straight shaft six millimeter hex socket, torque the DIN retainer to 150 inch pounds in a single smooth motion. Do not walk the re retainer into position with repeated applications of torque. The difference in tightness between the torque of the DIN retainer 
and the greater a torque applied to the DIN housing is critical. This ensures that at disassembly, the DIN retainer loosens before the DIN housing beneath it. Install an unlubricated O-ring in the recess in the top of the DIN housing. This completes initial assembly of the Gears D6 first stage. We will now tune the regulator to specification before attaching the environmental seal. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only, to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown. Thank you.